Hi there, Johnny here from johnnylipsonstudios.co.uk and welcome to Studio One 5.5. So one of the most powerful things about Studio One as a DAW is that it is the first and I think the only DAW to offer a fully integrated mastering solution that seamlessly integrates between the song page and the project page. Um, and there, there really is no other DAW that does this at all. Um, but with version 5.5, what has been added is the most popular feature requests for the project page of all time. Plus, there have been a few extras added by the very creative guys in um, Persona Software over in Hamburg. So we're going to take a look at those now, and we're going to start with Track Automation, which has been a feature request for many, many years. A lot of people have been asking for this one, uh, but it's finally here, as you can see. Um, we now have this automate, very familiar little automation icon here, which you can just get out of by um, either pressing A or you can click this button here. We've also got an auto scroll feature now, which is very, very cool. Um, and you've got the familiar um, paint tool, the very, very powerful paint tools, um, freehand line, parabola, square, triangle, sign, saw wave, and the incredibly amazing transform tool. Um, and so you can use any of those modes to draw in automation um, directly onto the event here. Um, but you can also automate uh, parameters of plugins. For example, this, um, this low frequency cut here, um, you right click as you would when you're in the mixing phase in the song page and you just do edit automation and when you do that it appears here and then you just put it into latch or touch mode and you write your automation as I have done here with with this little piece of audio and you'll see that this moves in correspondence with um, uh, the automation that's written into the file so check this out a little sleepy as he peered through the haze He said I just got out of bed I'm gonna catch myself some rays Alright, so that is a pretty cool little feature right there. A lot of people have been asking that for a, um, a very long time. So check that one out and uh, we'll move on to the next brand new feature. So next up is clip gain uh, envelopes, which are now finally available here in the project page. This has been asked for for a very long time as well. But let's check this out. So what we can now do with this line that now appears on the events exactly the same way that they would in the song page. So if I right click the event, see we now have this checkbox, gain envelopes. We check this guy and you can bypass it as well when you need to. Once you've done all of that, you can now enter your automation points and you can increase the gain there. We could decrease it there. Um, and you can also use the, the pencil tool and you can do some freehand things as well if you need to, or you know, whatever you needed to do, you could you could draw a line that gives a little ramp up. All those are available in the pencil tool directly on the event, which is extremely cool indeed. So let's move on to the next one. So next up in this whistle stop tour through Studio One 5.5, we have the listen bus now available in the project page. Right next to the master tab, you have the listen bus tab. And now you can put your inserts, and also post uh, insert effects as well. And you can change the routing here. So if you're uh, routing to a different set of outputs for the listen bus, you can click this and you can select whatever um, outputs you have available. 
to change those. And the cool thing is this works exactly the same way as the listen bus in the mix console on the uh, song page works. So um, these are processed separately from the main out channel so that the main out channel can remain unchanged. And you can put things like Sonarworks or the Waves um, Abbey Road Studio plugin. You can put that on here um, for different headphone monitoring tools. Um, so this is incredibly powerful and useful for mastering engineers being able to now do what you could do in the song page with the listen bus in the project page. This is very, very cool indeed. So next, um, this one is really nice, simple, elegant, and yet very, very effective now. So this is where we can use the tab key to rename the next track in your little list here. So if I select this first one, double click on it, and then let's say I rename this, but I also want to rename the next one, I can press the tab key and it takes me down to the next one. And then I can do the same with the next one. And however many songs I have in my uh, project, I can do the same. So it makes uh, naming and renaming and entering data in this section a lot faster, a lot more efficient. It's a very nice little uh, sneaky one that they put in there. So next up, also imported from the song page into Studio One's project page is Track Transform. So now we can transform this to uh, rendered audio or to real-time audio. Now, if you have pipeline or something else running in the project page, just like you would have in the song page, you would only be able to uh, transform to real-time audio. So this is really easy to do, and you can also go back pretty easily as well. So um, if I right-click this header here, this option transform to rendered audio appears. So I click on this and you get the familiar um, rendering audio dialog box. Um, and then when it's complete, if you then decide you need to go back for any reason to make any further adjustments to your plugins, it's pretty easy to do. You just right click the header again, and this will say transform back to, well, it'll say transform to uh, real time audio is what it will actually say. Um, and then uh, you just click that and it just goes back. Everything goes back to as it was before and you can make your adjustments to your plugins and then you can retransform if you want. And the cool thing about this is that now this means that you can lighten the load of your CPU um, if you've got some heavy hitting plugins uh, in your projects and you just want to, you're happy with how things sound and you just want to unload them all, you can transform to um, rendered audio pretty easily that way. And if you're using pipeline, you can render all of the pipeline adjustments in as well. So this one is a very powerful uh, thing for mastering engineers to now have available to them in the project page. So next up, we have a couple of brand new features to the digital release section of the project page, which are extremely cool. So let's take a look at both of those. So first of all, just like in the song page, you are now able to do um, multiple uh, exports in a single pass. So if I wanted to export to Wave, FLAC, CAF, or OG Vorbis, or MP3, then I can select any one of these, and um, Studio One will render all of these in one shot, which is extremely cool. We also have a new file format that's supported, Opus file, which is also very nice to have. And over here on this section over here, this is a brand new section. Um, this allows you to select the loud target loudness for all of these uh, streaming services and platforms. So Apple Music, you've got Amazon Music there, you've got Alexa, you've got Netflix, you've got SoundCloud, Tidal, YouTube, and you can set up your custom one as well. So all of these are really cool. So let's take a look at a couple of these. So if I go Spotify, it shows you that the max loudness target is 14 LUFS. Um, and then if you go and take a look at Amazon Music, that's also targeting minus 14. Netflix is targeting minus 27. And YouTube is also minus 14. Um, and then there's 
this one here, AES Streaming, which is minus 18 LUFS. And it also tells you exactly kind of how much it would turn up your music by. So here is, it's going to show you a plus minus 2 dB tolerance. It's going to show you a max true peak value of negative 1. Um, so all of those are really, really cool, which means that if you are uploading to any of these platforms, you are able to adjust the loudness of your output to meet the targets for these platforms. It's a very, very powerful thing for us now to have in the project page, especially now that we are all kind of uploading things digitally rather than to CD these days. Well, some of the features that have been added to Studio One 5.5 are exclusively targeting the project page and giving it some much needed love after um, quite a wee while. We've not forgotten about the song page. Remember the plugin nap feature from Studio One 5.4? which was always available kind of as a global thing for your plugins overall. Well, it's been improved even more. So if I go to View, Plugin Manager, and if I just scroll this across a little bit, we now have a new column here called Plugin Nap. And the cool thing here is you can uncheck and check these as required so that the plugin nap feature only engages with the ones that are checked. Plugins that are not checked will not have the plugin nap feature enabled on it. So this is useful if plugin nap for some reason is not supported in a particular plugin or doesn't work particularly well with, with what you're trying to do with a particular plugin and you're finding that maybe you get some pops when um, plugin nap is engaging and disengaging, then you can just disable plugin nap altogether for that particular plugin. It's very, very powerful that you can do this now. And as you can see, I can go all the way down and I can see that some are checked and some are unchecked because the ones that are unchecked here um, are not supported with the plugin nap feature. So this is now very powerful that it is on a per plugin basis rather than just globally for all of your plugins. So also added for Impact XT is this cool little feature. You've always been able to kind of copy a pad in Impact via drag and drop. That's always been something that's been able to be done. But what we can now do is we can right click the pad and we can go copy pad and then we can go to another bank entirely and we can paste it. Cool, cute little feature um, for Impact XT. Okay, next up is this cool little addition to the chord track, which should make um, creating chords for your songs um, a lot easier particularly if you are trying to do an arrangement of an already existing song and you have the MIDI file for that song that create that already contains harmonic content, what you can now do is you can drag this directly to the chord track and the chord track will populate with um, the chords from that MIDI file and then you can have all of your arrangement follow those chord changes. So watch this. So if I grab this out of the browser, and drop it into the chord track. All the chord track now populates and it even tells us the correct key, which is very cool. Oh, this one that says A sharp six, when it should be B flat six. But other than that, this is pretty neat little feature because now what that means is that anything that is in your song that is set to follow the chord track will follow the chords of that particular MIDI file. So this is pretty powerful for arrangers in particular. Next up is a cool little addition to the Piano Roll Note Editor. And this is, if you set the scale, if you check this little box here and set the scale of uh, your particular song, so maybe you're doing a, a B-flat blues or something, seeing as I have, um, I got rhythm changes, in the chord track here, um, the B flat blues might actually work out quite nicely. But let's say I want to put in some chords in this guitar part, but I want to draw them in really quickly. If I hold down 
Alt or Option, uh, and then just drag vertically. According to the scale, what happens is you get a whole bunch of notes that can create chords. So if you want to get some chords made quickly that fit your particular scale, Now, those aren't particularly playable on an acoustic guitar, but you get the point, is that you can create some interesting chord voicings just by dragging your um, pencil tool with the Alt or Option modifier pressed down, and you can create some nice little vertical stacks, uh, which is great if you're actually working with modal music. And let's say you had this set to B-flat Mixolydian or something, then you can create some nice, unusual uh, stacked chord voicings uh, this way using the the pencil tool with the modifier. The next one we're going to take a look at is manually time stretching events, audio events. Now what you've always been able to do is you've always been able to use the Alt or Option modifier to time stretch the end of an event. Well what you can do now is you can do the same but this time at the start of the event. This is one of my favorite little features because this has been um, asked for for quite a while. I really like this one. Give this one a try. Have fun with it. So I hope you enjoyed this video going through a whistle stop tour of the Studio One 5.5 features. Go check them out for yourself. All I've done is just given you a very quick overview of how these things that have been added to the project page and some of these new additions to the song page work. Have fun with them. Enjoy. Go download it right now. See you in the next video.